Good afternoon, everybody. This is the uh, April 21, 2015 hearing of the Assembly Committee on Consumer Protection and Privacy. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, May 5th. Uh, clearly, clearly, we need a new chair. Um, all right, uh, we, uh, we're going to take a moment and establish a quorum. Gatto? I'm here. Wilk? Baker? Calderon? Here. Chang? Chow? Here. Cooper? Present. Dabobne? Here. Dolly? Gordon? Here. Lowe? Here. All right, a quorum is present. Uh, we, uh, we have a uh, number of bills on the hearing today. Looks like uh, six with two proposed for consent. I expect it to be a slightly shorter hearing and less contentious than last week. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's call our first author, uh, Mr. Tang. That was good news to hear that, Mr. Gata. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members. I'm here to present AB 1360. Uh, I just want to first of all just thank the committee consultant uh, for their analysis, and we accept the committee's amendments to clarify that this bill does not exempt transportation network companies from insurance requirements. Uh, AB 1360 allows transportation network companies to really uh, add additional ride-sharing features to their uh, to what they already offer consumers. Uh, just quite succinctly, what they uh, currently are trying to offer, and they rolled this out last fall, is that if people want to actually share rides, uh, they can share rides. These are individuals who don't necessarily know each other. Uh, I've tried this feature myself for the last uh, few weeks in my own city, and it's quite interesting. Um, and, and it's great for the consumer because we, we save money. It's great for the driver because they make more money. And it's great for the environment because we actually have fewer rides around the city. Uh, in addition, uh, this, is, this law is being used because the the California Public Utilities Commission asked us for clarification. Uh, and so because of that, we are using our uh, prerogative for the legislature to clarify existing uh, transportation network companies' laws. Um, I know that in particular, a number of legislators have specific questions regarding pricing concerns and transparency, so I will ask the witnesses when they talk to really address those, address those concerns specifically. Uh, again, with, uh, with me today are a number of representatives. Uh, we have from uh, Lyft, Tim Burr, uh, from Uber, Alex Lupp, and uh, Robert Callahan from the Internet Association. Move the bill. Welcome. Uh, let's go to witnesses in support. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee and staff. Good afternoon and thank you. My name is Timothy Burr. I'm Government Relations Manager for Lyft, work on our West Coast Public Policy team. Here today to express on behalf of Lyft our strong support for AB 1360. Uh, Assemblymember Ting did an excellent job explaining uh, the bill, and I just want to express um, how important this bill is to the future of ride sharing, carpooling, uh, and transportation in California. Uh, carpooling will be one of the keys to reducing congestion in this state. Right now, you may have heard the stat, 80% or over 80% of the seats on the road are empty at all times. It's a fancy way of saying we tend to drive alone. Um, we have seen, we, Lyft as a company, live, launched Lyft Line in 2014. Now, Lyft Line allows multiple passengers who are traveling separate to ride together. Um, and we've seen the demand for this grow. As of now, in San Francisco, over 50% of our rides um, are through Lyft Line. Lyft Line allows us to share rides, reduce the number of cars on the road, reduce the vehicle miles uh, traveled per car, split the cost, make it much more affordable. And also, there's a level of transparency here where the passenger uh, can see exactly um, because you're inputting both your, where you're beginning and where your destination is, you get, uh, basically you see how much it's going to be, also how much of a reduced fare it would be. So there's a, new, there's a level of transparency there. Uh, California, uh, we've, we've always, one of our goals has always been promoting carpooling, cutting fuel consumption. 1360 is an important next step to that. And we've uh, established a broad group of environmental and business support. Really thank you all for your time this afternoon. Terrific, thank you. Next witness. Uh, hi, I'm Alex Loip on behalf of Uber Technologies, and uh, I'd like to just associate my, my comments with uh, Mr. Burr from Lyft, but I wanted to add that our product is very similar. It's called Uber Pool. Uh, we've also seen a tremendous uh, adoption of this product since it's been launched. Um, we, in fact, over the last month, uh, estimate that more than one million vehicle miles have been saved in the four cities that we offer this, this product in. 
Um, it's uh, transparent. It has upfront pricing. Riders know exactly what they're going to be charged before they ever request a ride. Um, it reduces congestion. It reduces carbon emissions. And it's a, really a win-win-win, if that's possible. Um, so again, thank you for your time and uh, I urge support for the bill. Thank you. Terrific. Next witness. Robert Callahan with the Internet Association, one of the sponsors of the bill. Not much to add. We think it's a great bill. Urge your I vote. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to witnesses and, or I'm sorry, public comment and support. Okay. Members, John Doherty uh, on behalf of TechNet in support of the bill. Mr. Chair, members, Jeremy Murs, Matt, the California Chamber of Commerce, also in support. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Matt Robinson with Shaw Yater Antwi on behalf of Caltrain and the City of Los Angeles today in support. Terrific. Let's go to the witnesses in opposition. If you gentlemen can make way at the desk. Mr. Chair and members, Greg Cook, representing the Greater California Livery Association. I regret that we continue to support the bill. We had hoped that perhaps we could work out an accommodation with the I believe, I believe you mean op oppose the bill, Pardon right? Me? You continue to oppose the we bill? continue to oppose okay, the bill, right, yes. Got it, got it. Um, we'd hoped that we could work out an accommodation, but that apparently is impossible. But as your analysis on page four demonstrates, uh, the Public Utilities Commission has pretty strict rules on this fair sharing, ride sharing process, and they require charter party carriers today to get an A permit, which costs $1,500 to get, and then additional administrative expense. This bill, in its present form, would allow the circumventation of, 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 that, uh, of that requirement. What we have proposed to the author is that it eliminate TNCs as one who could be exempted from that and say that any charter party carrier providing service in a vehicle with seven passengers plus a driver would be exempt from that, from that fee and that requirement of additional administrative expense. And uh, with that, we would support the bill. But I think in this case, because it clearly distinguishes between two distinct types of charter party carrier, that's really not fair competition. So we continue to oppose the bill and hope that should the bill leave the committee today, that we can work with the author in the bill next house. But thank you very much. Terrific. Let's go to the next witness in opposition. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Mark Gruberg. Uh, I'm with the San Francisco Taxi Workers Alliance. I'm also a cab driver for Green Cab in San Francisco. And I'd like to address the uh, environmental myths that uh, surround uh, this bill and these, these uh, services in, in, in general. Um, here are some verifiable facts. Last year, Uber claimed to have 16,000 vehicles operating in San Francisco alone, and Lyft has made similar claims. That compares to fewer than 2,000 taxis, most all of which are hybrids or other low emissions vehicles. San Francisco is now the second most congested city in America after Los Angeles, and it's not hard to see why. The claim that TNCs take other cars off the road is not true to any significant degree. The UC Transportation Center released a study last summer in which passengers were asked how they would have made the trip if not by TNC. Only 6% said they would have taken their own car, and another 1% said they would have gone with a friend or a family member. 93% would have gone some other way, 39% in a cab, 33% by bus or rail. The further expansion of TNCs allowed by this bill will take ever more passengers away from environmentally preferable alternatives. Uh, because the shared ride is ostensibly a cheaper option, the heaviest impact will likely be on public transit. And that brings up the uh, subject of pricing. Uber, in particular, is infamous for its surge pricing, where the fare can be up to eight times the uh, base amount. One passenger paid $470 after a big event for a ride uh, within the city limits of, of San Francisco. Uh, there's nothing in the law or the bill to prevent the application of surge pricing to split fares. Um, the exception that is carved out in this legislation applies to TNCs, but not other CPCs, as you have heard. Uh, th they can't charge split fares. 
uh, buses and shuttles with PSC licenses can charge split fares, but they must file their rates, which is subject to oversight by the CPUC. Under this bill, TNCs are given a special privilege without any concurrent limitation or responsibility. And lastly, it's extremely troubling uh, that the um, companies like Uber and Lyft are, are, are providing these services in open defiance of the law. Uh, they, they don't don't listen to any of these euphemistic comments about clarification of the law. They're breaking the law. Uh, passing this bill is going to uh, reward unlawful behavior and encourage more of the same. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a public comment in opposition? Seeing none, let's open it up to the panel for questions or comments. Uh, Ms. Chang. just want to say to the author, it's a great bill, and I would love to sign on as a co-author. Thank you. Happy to add you. Uh, Mr. Chow. Yeah, just a couple of uh, quick questions. First of all, I think one of the witnesses mentioned about transparency. So um, essentially, uh, prior to the, the passengers s deciding to use the service, for example, uh, he or she will be able to know exactly how much is being charged for that particular trip. Is, is, that, is that not correct? Thank you very much uh, for your question. Yeah, ab absolutely. The way it works is, um, you know, if you if you put on at least from Lyft, I think Uber Pool is probably similar. You you open up the application, you toggle over to sort of opt in to using the Lyft line or mm. probably Uber Pool. So you live opt into the service. At that point in time, um, you 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 indicate where you're going to be picked up from and where your destination is, and then it'll generate for you literally what the amount of the fare would be um, and also to show you what it would be if you just took say an original lift so you can actually see you know up to 60 percent savings at that moment uh, before you make a decision so you're basing your decision then to request a ride with knowing exactly um, essentially what what you're paying what what how much reduce of the fare it would so, be so you'll be able to compare um, you know the the amount it would cost to do just uh, standalone versus uh, carpooling? Absolutely, so, so, yeah. It'll, it'll highlight for you, in fact, what it would cost if you took it you know, by yourself. Okay. Now, a follow-up question. Uh, um, would you address the issue of uh, price searching, uh, you know, as uh, detailed in the analysis? Uh, since there's no limit as to how much, you know, fees could be charged, how would the consumer be protected uh, in that regard? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll kind of speak from a, a personal sense. I've lived in San Francisco for a long time. I use LiftLine um, as much as I can. Um, and with respect to surgery, I mean, we're trying to really open up transportation uh, by reducing prices significantly. And when I say down, up, you know, up to 60% savings, that's generally the type of numbers that we've been seeing um, with respect to, to pricing. So now, you know, you get to see exactly how much, how much of a reduced fare generally it would be. Um, and so hopefully that. Although that, that, uh, that fee would probably substantially increase uh, during peak hours or peak days, uh, would you not uh, agree? Uh, that would fluctuate, so to speak, you know, during peak hours. There's an opportunity for f f uh, fees to fluctuate, but um, generally with Lyft line, I think Uber Pool, there's no fluctuation. Uh, yes, uh, we do not uh, have dynamic pricing on the Uber Pool product. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Dubonme, followed by Mr. Calderon. Uh, I have a question for each side. Is for the gentleman from the Taxi Workers Alliance, can you provide us with a copy of that study uh, that you said came from, I think, the UC Institute or something? And also, when you say, you know, you kind of use the fact that only 6% of people said that in this survey, is that a scientific study, do you know? Was that an actual, uh, just a kind of a survey? So if you could provide some kind of um, clarification in terms of actual documentation of the claims you made in the numbers, uh, that would be very helpful. Uh, also, I, I would want to remind you that the state of California is much bigger than San Francisco. In San Francisco, you obviously have much more public transportation options than the rest of the state. In my district, in the San Fernando Valley and across Los Angeles, uh, we don't have the availability of public transportation like other more metropolitan and denser areas. Uh, for many of my constituents, Uber and Lyft and other ride-sharing services have become public transportation. To try to get a cab in most places in Los Angeles is a nightmare. And I will tell you, in terms of this new idea of ride-sharing where you can have routes developed, where people can go on them and have a steady type of uh, transportation method, that they can ride share with another person and get to work and get to you know certain destinations on a regular basis, whether it's every day or twice a week. I don't think that's a service that cabs could adequately provide in my district or in the city of Los Angeles. That's just not the model they have. 
Uh, so I'm very supportive of any way we can get people out of their cars, get them into carpooling situations. So I'd like to see this evidence that you think only 6% of people that are taking Lyft or Uber, I, I just don't know what, other, well, I mean, are you, are you telling me these people are walking? Are you I just don't know what the evidence is. I think that's a very bold claim to make that 94% of people taking Uber and Lyft wouldn't be in a car in some other capacity. Uh, if that was the case, we'd have a lot more bus routes in Los Angeles. So if you could provide documentation on that, I'd be very grateful. Uh, Senator, I, I have it here. It's also cited in um, the letter of opposition that we uh, presented uh, with, the, uh, with the link to it. Um, um, but, uh, is it a scientific is, study or is it yeah. a survey? Well, this is, this is a study conducted by the, San, the um, UC Transportation Center. Uh, I, I, I believe it conforms to, um, you know, scientific uh, standards, but uh, you, you can. If we could get a copy of that, paper, yes, I would be very grateful. I, I will provide it to you. And uh, th those figures. And does that right reflect here, just San Francisco right or does that reflect on this the page state? If you would like to take a look at it. I would be more than happy to. Thank you. Let's uh, go through the sergeants, if you could. Um, thank you very much. Um, and if I, if I may address the, uh, the the rest of your comments, you may. The um, what needs to be looked at here is the overall picture. The, the Los Angeles area has the worst traffic, not the second worst, like San Francisco. Uh, and if these services are, in fact, adding to road congestion, adding to pollution, adding to wear and tear on the roads, uh, and all those problems, that, you know, needs to be seriously addressed. And I, we believe they are. There's evidence for that in this study. And uh, uh, certainly more research needs to be done on the fact. But the fact is that, that this bill expands a service that... Uh, we see it as a, a extremely hostile to the environment. I would like to point out that this survey, I think your comments were very misleading. 39% of people said that they would take a taxi if they didn't take an Uber or Lyft. So that's a form of transportation that would be, I think, considered a car. 20% said a bus, 9% said a rail. That obviously is very specific to probably San Francisco. 8% uh, walk, 2% bike. 6% said their own car, 1% said with another family member, 11% other. So in reality, we're not saying 6% of people would have taken a car. The 40% that are taking taxis would have also been in a car. It just would have been a taxi instead of an Uber and Lyft. So I think that was a little misleading, but thank you for the May I, may I just respond to that, please, Mr. Chair? Uh, sure, you may briefly respond. Okay. So the, first of all, the taxis are already on the street. Uh, you're, 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 not, you're not adding vehicles uh, when... Uh, when, when someone takes a taxi. And second of all, you have to look at the environmental profile. Uh, I can speak only for San Francisco, but uh, hybrid cabs, which are, are ubiquitous in San Francisco, are, are catching hold you know, almost everywhere because of the savings, whereas the TNCs, you, you can have a van, you can have a minivan, you can have an SUV. We see pickup trucks doing this service. There's no comparison. Okay. And I don't want to get too much into the, the environmental debate because, um, you know, one could see that going um, either way at this stage of the market or the market in the future. Uh, futurists have noted that, uh, you know, you could, we could be entering a world where uh, young people, particularly millennials, just opt not to buy a car at all uh, in certain cities where it's convenient to use these, these carriers. So uh, I'm not sure that this environmental debate is one that can be resolved. I'm not sure that there are any statistics or any studies that, uh, that would satisfy that. Let's stick to the bill in chief. Uh, the bill in the chief does not have to do with environmental concerns. It has to deal with uh, regulatory or statutorily authorizing uh, carpooling for, for these ride-sharing companies. So let's go back to that. Questions? More questions? Mr. Calderon. Um, thank you, Mr. Ting, for willing, your willingness to champion this issue. I mean, when I, when I see this, um, I think of college students and the fact that um, college debt and, and debt incurred by trying, for kids trying to reach a college education or attain a college education today is higher than credit card debt in this nation. And, I mean, it's something as simple as, you know, I don't like being invited to birthday dinners because I know that somebody's going to walk out and I'm going to get stuck paying their part of it. And if I'm in a situation I can't really afford that, it affects me negatively. And if I want to go out with a group of my friends, I should be able to split that fare, especially if I'm a college student, to be able to ease, to still 
do what I want to do, go out with my friends, have a fun time, but also ease that burden of of having to pay more than I otherwise would have had to pay if I was able to split that fare. And on with regards to your comment in terms of surge times and fares with regards to Lyft and Uber jumping up um, during uh, particular events or, 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 or peak hours, wouldn't you see that as a maybe a competitive advantage that they're charging far more for that same ride as opposed to what you would charge in your own taxi cab um, service? I, I think it's a consumer issue because, you know, as a taxi driver and one who works at night, uh, we are uh, serving population that is uh, frequently inebriated. If we didn't pick up drunks on Friday and Saturday night, we'd have nothing to do. Uh, these people very, very frequently simply do not know uh, what they're paying. They often don't know where they're going, but that's another story. But, um, you know, y you can't depend on somebody opening the app and, and just, you know, punching a couple of buttons and then finding out at the end of the ride that they're paying 100 or 200 bucks. Well, I, uh, I appreciate everybody's comments. I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, but I definitely think that this is a measure worth moving forward today, and I look forward to vi voting aye. Any other questions or comments from the panel? I don't want to shock too many people who know that I'm a Democrat by t bringing the discussion back to uh, supply and demand and letting the market decide. But, um, but this is a product where I feel very comfortable that the, uh, the marketplace should and does work and does decide. Um, very familiar with your products. I think that um, uh, the function that requires, for example, a, a consumer to acknowledge exactly how much they are paying, the multiple of it, for example, with Uber, is a sufficient consumer protection, even for people who are inebriated. Um, I think these products have changed the landscape of the world. Um, nothing, nothing less. Uh, I represent a district like Mr. Dababne's where there is no public transportation, or little to speak of. There is no meaningful taxi services. And what this has done in terms of taking drunk drivers off the road, I... I'm not privy to any studies, but just anecdotes, but, uh, but it's been profound. And uh, I think this product will make it even more accessible, and for that reason, I'm supporting the bill. So, um, and the only question I suppose is, um, at some point, I'm sure people will get married uh, using one of these products. <laughs> people will meet uh, somebody using uh, your product, and, and so maybe there's a venture capitalist out there who wants to combine Tinder with Uberpool. <laughs> All right, let's take a vote. We have a... <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you may close, Mr. Ting. Well, I, I was just going to briefly, uh, respectfully ask for I vote, but just in particular, I think uh, I think uh, I'd like to th thank my colleagues who've hit on this tone. Uh, one of the biggest issues has been really around access. And, and before, I think uh, the cab companies have been great when you could actually get a cab, whether it's in San Francisco or L.A., but for many of us, uh, or for a lot of us, we couldn't get access to that. So I think these companies have provided a product, like the chair mentioned, which has really been um, sorely in demand. So I respectfully ask for your I vote. Terrific. Okay. Properly, it has been properly moved and seconded. The motion is due pass as amended. The amendments include the technical amendments noted in the analysis, plus also adding Ms. Chang and myself as co-authors. And um, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Gatto? Aye. Gatto, aye. Wilk? Baker? Aye. Baker, aye. Calderon? Aye. Calderon, aye. Chang? Aye. Chang, aye. Chow? Aye. Chow, aye. Cooper? Aye. Cooper, aye. Dababne? Aye. Dababne, aye. Dolly? Aye. Dolly, aye. Gordon? Aye. Gordon, aye. Low? Aye. Low, aye. That bill is passed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do the consent calendar real quick. Second. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. This is the consent calendar. Motion is due pass. Gatto? Aye. Gatto, aye. Wilk? Baker? Aye. Baker, aye. Calderon? Aye. Calderon, aye. Chang? Aye. Chang, aye. Chow? Aye. Chow, aye. Cooper? Aye. Cooper, aye. Dababne? Aye. Dababne, aye. Dolly? Aye. Dolly, aye. Gordon? Aye. Gordon, aye. Low? Low, aye. We are, uh, we are down now to committee authors, um, and uh, we're going to start with Mr. Calderon. He has Assembly Bills 634 and 691. You can start with whichever one you want. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll go ahead and start with AB 634. Terrific. The floor is yours. 
Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the committee um, and staff for working with my office to clarify the provisions and intent of this measure as originally in introduced. AB 634 will, will protect the privacy of Californians who purchase timeshares and prevent timeshare owners from having their personal information sold to third parties, including the, those entities that use the information for fraudulent purposes. And since uh, we do have a motion a second. I'm going to yield the rest of my time to my supporters. And with me today, I have uh, John Caldwell and Chris Stewart from ARDA and ARDA ROC uh, to answer any questions. Welcome, gentlemen. Witnesses and support. John Caldwell on behalf of ARDA. Uh, again, thank you to the staff and the chairman for uh, helping us on the bill and making it uh, a, a fair balance between uh, uh, timeshare governance and the privacy of the timeshare owners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Chris Stewart. I am a Director of Government Affairs for the American Resort Development Association and also represent Arta Rock, which is our resort owners coalition, which represents uh, more than a million timeshare owners across the country, including tens of thousands here in California. Uh, and that we are speaking today to support the bill to protect the personal information of those owners from being released to, uh, for solicitation or often being used for fraudulent purposes. And we, we respectfully ask uh, the committee to support that as well. Terrific. Are there, is there public comment in support? Are there witnesses in opposition? Questions or comments from the panel? Seeing none, the bill's been properly moved and seconded. Um, let's call the roll. Gatto? Aye. Gatto, aye. Wilk? Baker? Aye. Baker, aye. Calderon? Aye. Calderon, aye. Chang? Aye. Chang, aye. Chow? Aye. Chow, aye. Cooper? Aye. Cooper, aye. Dabobne? Aye. Dabobne, aye. Dolly? Dolly, aye. Gordon? Aye. Gordon, aye. Low. Aye. Low, aye. The bill is passed. Thank you. Okay, next you have Assembly Bill 691, which also enjoys a two-pass recommendation. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. As Californians increasingly use online services like YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and email to produce and store information, it is important to consider what happens to all the private information stored on their various online accounts after they pass away. In fact, a recent poll found that 70% of Americans say that their online communications and photos should remain private after they die unless they give prior consent for others to have access. And 65% of Americans say it is a violation of their privacy if that information is shared without such consent. In the same study, only 15% said that a state attorney should have the discretion to decide what happens to, peop to people's private communications and photos. AB 691 addresses this issue by striking a balance between providing a clear path for f fiduciaries to access relevant information to handle the deceased person's estate while respecting the privacy choices of not just the deceased person, but those with whom the deceased was communicating with. Thank you, and I respectfully ask for your aye vote. And with me today, I have John Doherty with TechNet and Yvonne Altamura with Yahoo. Terrific. Let's go to witnesses and support. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. John Doherty with TechNet uh, in support. We're pleased to be a co-author on this important piece of legislation. Uh, as online accounts continue to proliferate, um, uh, this bill uh, fills an important need in, t in terms of how to deal with those accounts once somebody passes away. Um, the, right now, the state of play is that the state law is silent and federal law is silent. And those laws that are on the books actually work against disclosure. And what this bill does is provide a, a, a relatively simple, as simple as you can get in the probate process, uh, manner for which people to access their electronic records to help uh, administer the estate. Uh, the bill balances that need with the privacy rights not only of the decedent but of third parties. Uh, and as somebody who has been watching this debate across the, uh, occur across the country, this bill is an important opportunity for California to set the model for the entire nation uh, on how to handle this. So we're, we're pleased to support it and uh, ask for your I vote. Thank you very much. Next witness. Mr. Chair and members, Ivan Altamura representing Yahoo. I'd just like to echo the comments of the chair and my colleague, Mr. Doherty. Um, Yahoo is in strong support of this bill. We think it's a a good balance between protecting privacy and providing the administrators of estates with a tool that's necessary to help uh, uncover assets uh, when of a decedent. Um, we think that you know, in an ever ever increasing world of uh, online uh, online data, that this is an important tool and one that that will uh, will help um, foster 
a, uh, an efficient administration of estates as well as um, promote uh, within the estate planning community a, a higher recognition that when, when uh, members of the public are planning for their, their estates that they uh, recognize that this is something that they have to be concerned about. Terrific. Next witness. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, Robert Callahan with the Internet Association, also a co-sponsor of the bill. Um, this is a novel and new issue that is we're in a unique place in time where it's very relevant for this state in particular to take a leading role in solving the pr problem and providing a common sense legal framework for people to use going forward. So we think it's a great measure. Urge your support for the bill. Thank you. Wonderful. Let's go to public comment and support. Chair and committee members, Pat Zenzela with KP Public Affairs. I'm here on behalf of Google, and Google uh, also supports the bill. Mr. Chair and members, Jeremy Merz, behalf of the California Chamber of Commerce, also in strong support. Mr. Chair and members, Cliff Burke here on behalf of AOL, also in strong support for the reasons stated. Mr. Chair, Chris McKaylee on behalf of the Civil Justice Association of California in support. Mr. Chair, members, Ann Blackwood on behalf of Facebook, also in support. Great. Let's go to witnesses in opposition. <clears throat> Seeing none, questions, comments? Ms. Chang. Also want to commend you on a great bill, and please add me on as a co-author. Questions or comments, others? Seeing none. Um, I do want to commend you and all of your partners on this um, for taking on an issue that is increasingly significant and will continue to be so. I do think the entire country is watching, and I think you have struck a really terrific balance with this bill. We didn't want to hold you uh, with amendments, but uh, I'd like to be added as a co-author as well. Um, today we're apparently on the same page, and um, with that, I'll invite you to close. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Really appreciate your support, and I look forward to this measure moving forward and uh, being able to work with every single one of you. I respectfully ask for your eye vote. <laughs> A lot of love here today, which is very nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, Madam Secretary, the bill has a due pass recommendation. It was moved by Mr. Cooper with that lovely comment and uh, seconded by Mr. Cooper, too. And uh, let's call the roll. Motion is due pass. Gatto? Aye. Gatto, aye. Wilk? Aye. Wilk, aye. Baker? Aye. Baker, aye. Calderon? Aye. Calderon, aye. Chang? Aye. Chang, aye. Chow? Aye. Chow, aye. Cooper? Aye. Cooper, aye. Dababne? Aye. Dababne, aye. Dolly? Aye. Dolly, aye. Gordon? Aye. Gordon, aye. Low. Low I. All right, that bill's passed. I'm going to hand the microphone over to our vice chair and uh, present our last bill of the day, which is AB 1310. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair and committee members. Uh, Move right the bill. Second. Thank you. This bill will help um, our law enforcement agents in the state uh, prosecute people who exploit people online with cyber exploitation. Uh, right now, it's very hard because you have to seek uh, seeking the warrant, and some of the other paperwork is very difficult. This will allow the attorney general to seek it uh, in a number of different jurisdictions, including where the crimes were committed, where the victim lives, et cetera. I respectfully ask for I vote. Good afternoon, committee uh, members and chair. This, uh, my name is Thomas Lawson. I represent the attorney general, and uh, we already have a motion to uh, to move the bill, so I'll be brief. I want to thank the uh, committee staff for accurately displaying the compromise that we worked out with ACLU in relation to privacy issues, and happy to answer any questions, and we appreciate your eye vote on this bill. Thank you. Thank you, members. Don Kepke with McHugh Kepke and Associates on behalf of Crime Victims United of California, also in strong support. Uh, certainly, technology has brought about great opportunity to interact and be engaged on, in an online way, but it's also brought about opportunities to exploit uh, victims. And so, for this reason, we're very supportive of this bill as a means to provide additional tools to law enforcement uh, to help prosecute those who would hide uh, behind technology to do so. So, for those reasons, we're in strong support. Thank you. Great. Any other uh, testimony and support? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, members of the committee. Uh, Tom Sheehy on behalf of the California Police Chiefs Association here today. Glad to support AB 1310. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody here in opposition? 
Seeing none, uh, members' comments, questions, concerns? I just want to thank, thank the chair for bringing this forward. It's a great tool for law enforcement to help them out. And on the times they do investigate crimes that are misdemeanors, um, allowing them to do search warrants is, is a big help. Uh, Mr. Calderon's been exploited before, so he's know what it's like to be a victim. So <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a great tool. <laughs> Mr. Chair, if you'd, like, if you'd like to close. I don't know that I could top that, but um, I would respectfully ask for your I vote. <laughs> Call the roll. The motion is due pass. Gatto? Aye. Gatto, aye. Wilk? Aye. Wilk, aye. Baker? Aye. Baker, aye. Calderon? Aye. Calderon, aye. Chang? Aye. Chang, aye. Chow? Aye. Chow, aye. Cooper? Aye. Cooper, aye. Debobne? Aye. Debobne, aye. Dolly? Aye. Dolly, aye. Gordon? Aye. Gordon, aye. Low. Aye. Low, aye. 11-0, congratulations, Mr. Chair. Uh, we're going to hold the we're going to hold the roll open so members can add on, including me. All right, this meeting is adjourned.